That's my friend Warren Sapp that's sitting right here next to me. Ow. Uh, my man on game day morning. And uh, for years, we've worked together. Since the, since the network started. I mean, we started the Nightline thing, Sapp and Strahan. That's right. That, that Come is on, baby. Now, that is correct. Yeah. Where one of the first things we did <laughs> on, on Total Access yeah. was hook you up on <laughs> Bucks Cam. Yep. And Strahan up on Giants Cam. But this was and before Raymond James collide. was even built. And we had the little backdrop that was the, what Raymond James' uh, little uh, club area was going to look like. That's right. Oh, we had fun. And, and now he brought it, Vita Guerrera down. Oh, that, oh, when Vita Guerrera came in. <laughs> because we asked Stray and you what? for it guests. Halle Berry. Do you it, want it, no, guests? no, it was, we was talking about who you want, Halle Berry or Vita Guerrera. And, and you. you know, we, I guess we couldn't find Halle Berry and Vita yeah. Guerrera. Vita, Vita was more available than uh, Halle Berry. Yes, she was. She came right down the steps. She did, but oh. in, in New, we, she was New York oh. based, so she came oh. down the steps. Oh yeah, Tampa was bad. We, we, and we you were have, we didn't have Tampa. much of Tampa. You had to go to Shepherd's with me on a Sunday afternoon <laughs> to really see what Tampa had to offer. But you know, on a Thursday afternoon, four o'clock, nah, yeah. it, it really is slim picking. So uh, you're, the Bucks, I, I'm sure everybody Stop. asks you about this all the time. We almost scored, got scored 50, a 50 burger again, Rich. Well, what's happening though? How do you go up to Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh do what you did there, mm -hmm. and then have Joe Flacco come and throw and light you up five touchdowns on you before people are even out of the parking lot? Before somebody went to go get their second beer. I mean, it's unbelievable. What's, what's wrong with, with with Tampa if you could put your finger on it? I'll all? say this, because I liken it back to when it was me, Brooks, Hardy. Lynch, mm -hmm. a bunch of better players mm -hmm. in that same situation when Dungey first came in and started teaching us. They're being taught right now. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of dumb Mondays. It's, it's funny we have money. Dumb Monday meetings that now we show you. What do you mean dumb Monday meetings? Where they ask Eric Curry in the six technique, what gap you got, Eric? And he goes, I got to push the tight end back and I have the C gap. And you can see Eric Curry fall behind the tight end in the D gap and here come the ball right to the C gap. We mm -hmm. just call them dumb dumb meetings because he had to teach us where to be within this defense. And mm -hmm. we were one and seven the first eight games with Tony Dungy. And then it was five and three. And then we took off from that point. We took off from that point. Yeah, it's some teaching that has to go on because you don't really think it's that simple. I'm telling you, that defense, There's just be where players. you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. And I'm talking about Hardy Nickerson, Warren Sapp, Derrick Brooks, John Lynch when we first started. And we were one and seven. That's a pretty good four. And your position coach for most of those years ah. is now... Working the Dallas Cowboys, a, magic. And people are basically calling Rod Marinelli a miracle worker based on what we saw the Dallas defense <laughs> looked like last year under Monty Kiffin. And you were, you were, you would be taking. I, I remember I would watch some of these Dallas Cowboys games with you because before you were Buck, before you were Listen, Kane. Since I was knee high to a jackrabbit, I am a Dallas Cowboy fan. It's no remarkable it. that you are <laughs> back in the day watching Staubach and all in and the Hat and Landry and what have you, yeah. and now seeing your old position coach go ahead and coordinate the defense in the manner that his defense is playing right now is truly remarkable. This is coach of the year type stuff that we're seeing. What is he doing, in your estimation, Marinelli, with this Cowboys defense to play like this? It's are? not just Marinelli. It's the whole staff. It's the whole team. They're playing complimentary football. The Dallas Cowboys can control the line of scrimmage. What they did yesterday, Rich, going up to Seattle and DeMarco Murray running the ball for 100-plus yards, Frank go ahead 14. The other guy had 17. I mean, we, we wrote down the list, the Eddie Laces and all these people. I right. mean, 24 carries, 94 four yards. No one had 40 yards against them, period. Nobody. They went up there with the mindset. And you know what? We got to give, we got to tip our hat to Jerry Jones, because today is his birthday. Happy birthday, Jerry. Yeah, 72. And, and he said, we're going to attack him. There's something in Dallas right now. They're believing in what they're, they're mixing and matching, because it's just basic football. They're turning around, handing it off. They're clogging the holes on defense, and they're making you punt and play defense and doing all the basic things you have to do in a football game to win. It's, it's really not rocket science. Six games Ooh. in a row to start the season, 100 yards and more. Move over Jim butt. Brown. He's tied with Jim Brown. <laughs> and, and here come the Giants next week who couldn't who, who gave up a buck okay, 49 to, to LaShawn McCoy. He might just break Jim Brown's record next week. Ooh. But you think about it. I said this at the top of the hour, last hour. The things that normally would come up to bite the Cowboys at the end of a game. They're not happening this year. No. They are not happening this year. No. Romo threw that dime, even though some people think it might have been for Witten, but Terrence Williams making a play. I mean... Last week, it was Des Bryant making the play in mm -hmm. overtime, but Romo is putting the ball for his receivers to make a play on. And they're making the play. They are. 
And the clock management issues are still boiling up again. Remember, Tyron Listen. Smith with that hold at the end of the game Horrible. yesterday happened Horrible. to Dallas last year in Detroit. They lost that one yesterday. They came up with the defensive you stop. Learn, you learn from your mistakes. And you put yourself in a position, because I know this, Marinelli, you're never too far ahead, you're never too far behind. Each play, let's lock in, man. Let's, let's wipe away the last play. Let's get back to the next play. And I see that Dallas defense doing that. Good play, bad play, they wipe it away and come back to the table and say, what do we have to do in this situation for our team? But wasn't Monty Kiffin saying the same things last year? You know what? Sometimes it gets a little old. And, I, and I'll tell you that. I mean, Monty's, Monty was an was a emotional guy. And at the age he is, I don't know how emotional you can get at that point, you know, because he's gonna, he's, he has a long legacy of some great players in his wake that he put us in the proper position and called the defense to a T, all that. But at some point, you know this, Rich. I mean, no, Father Time doesn't lose. <laughs> it's I two hit, undefeated things. Father I hit, Time, and I, we can't talk about what else. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I want to hit the AFC North with you real quick uh -huh. um, because it, the, everybody's at 500 or above. And I know you're, you're, you're tight with Tomlin. And, and this defense doesn't look anything like the defense that we've come to expect. <laughs> now, they're 3-3, three and three, but they're last place. they last. In that division. That's strange, isn't What it? is going on with the, with the Steelers' defense? I'll tell you this just, and I haven't talked to Mike T about it, but sure. I, I can get it from a, I, I talked to him about Lance, uh, the, the receiver that had the out-of-bottom moment, the out-of-bottom moment, you know, when he's yelling at Mike T on the sideline. But the defense now, when you get young players in and – as exotic as Dick LeBeau likes to be with some of his packages and the things like he likes to send people, you have to know where you are and know where your teammates supposed to be and know where the weaknesses are in your defense. And when you're learning the defense, you want to stay real basic. You don't want to put yourself in a position to where you have people <laughs> running out to a hook flat and they're supposed to be going seam to, seam to the flat. You know, it's just, it's just what a defense is. Mm -hmm. And when you think that the seam is open and the safety has to get over the top, but the safety's thinking the middle is open, see what I'm saying? You can't have that kind of discussion going on after the play or before the snap of the ball. You have to go with something that everybody knows and play it. Because Money used to have a saying, I don't care what defense y'all play, just as long as y'all let me y'all play. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he sounds oh, like. That's, as long as all 11 of us is playing what defense, we have a shot. But if six is playing something else and five is playing another, you're in trouble. Assignment football. Oh, that's it. Alignment, assignment, execution. Right. What did he go? A, A, E. e. Yeah. And the Steelers do not have that. No, right they don't. But more than that, they don't have playmakers. Because if Timmons or Palomalu's not making the play, it's not going to be made. Chase is a good young player, but, yes. you know, you just... He hasn't and been then, on the field. No, no, and then Jones is out, too, and then you bring back <laughs> James Harrison after having a retirement party in the locker room. So, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's a beautiful thing, you know, mm -hmm. to have a retirement party in the locker room and then two weeks later sign him back to come... Play in that locker room? Right. Nah, that, that just doesn't bode well. Yeah, the Steelers, again, they, they lost. They got. But the big thing is Ike. Ike off that corner. Ike Taylor. Yeah, Ike off that corner. Right. And Pittsburgh uh, Pittsburgh has the Monday night capper of next week against the Houston Texans. <sighs> so, they, you know, uh, the J.J. Watt's going to come to town. And Clowney Good might luck. be back for that for, for Big Ben. That's going to be on the worldwide <laughs> leader in sports. Atop the division, we've got the Cincinnati Bengals at 3-1-1. One, and one. Mm -hmm. They had a chance to go to 4-1, and one, but as we all saw yesterday... Uh, in overtime, after swapping field goals, here comes Mike Nugent from The Ohio State University. Oh. And Noonan. And then after the game, after the game, Pac-Man, uh, pardon me, Adam Jones, the artist formerly known as Pac-Man, had this to say. I want to get your thoughts on what he had to say. It's Pac-Man. Adam, it's a tie, not a loss, but you walked in here one angry man. Why does this make you so angry? We should have won the game. Sorry for my friends, but there's no way you get down and work out that hard and, and lose the game. Well, what about coming back from all the... Le we should have won the game. What went wrong? <laughs> you tell me. We was in perfect position to win the game. Two seconds on the clock. We got to win the game. Everybody in here get paid to do a job, and that's what everybody need to do. I mean, it's time for a new kicker? I ain't say that, but I say it's everybody get paid to do a job. So perform and do your job. That's all I'm saying. And that was a Didi Kinkabwala of, uh, of Good NFL. Good job, Didi. Didi. I mean, sometimes the, the You push him right on over the edge. Well, sometimes the best questions are the simple ones. Oh, yeah. And, this, and it's just, you know, what went you wrong, tell me? et cetera. But <laughs> you know, Rich, what do you, what do you, you know me? You know me a long time. I there's do. three things on my football team you never bother. And that's my coach, my quarterback, and my kicker. That's it. That's it. So you would have gone up to him in the locker room? Don't say you? nothing. You don't think that man feel bad? You don't think Nugent knows that he... 
took a game away from his football team. But here's the key to this, Rich. Unless Pac-Man's going to line up 53 yards from it, because that's in range, too. Mm -hmm. Not just the one that's right up there. I want to see you at 53. You go kick it, Pac-Man. Or the artist leave, known, pump form leave, don't want to be known no more as Pac-Man. But you brought that to us, so you always Pac-Man to me. And, oh, woo, woo, woo. Come on, relax, So what? A, so would you have gone up and would you go don't up to the locker room? Don't say a word to the kicker. So if you're Geno Atkins, you go up to him and say something afterwards? No. Like, say, don't say anything? Oh, yeah, I definitely go to, go to, oh, uh, go to Pac-Man. afterwards. Hey, right. Hey, leave the kicker alone. Unless you're ready to line up with that kind of pressure 40, 50 yards away from the, from the kick it, unless you got those kind of skills, shut the hell up. That's what, that, that's the rule. Yeah, man. I mean, that's he, the rule because he, nobody's going to tell him how to backpedal and break on the corner route or pack. It's third and seven. You ain't going to play the sticks. It's a lot more opportunity for Pac Man to have his job evaluated than the kicker. And he went the 21st century phrase, which is the uh, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. I'm not saying we need a new kicker. I'm just saying, dude, your job. Even though it's it's like he's oh, saying. Oh, now <laughs> everybody has a job. Yours is to cover and return the kick 97 yard like you did to spark mm -hmm. the rally. Now mm -hmm. let the general manager pick the kicker. Shut up. They're at Indianapolis <laughs> next week. Bengals at Indy next Listen, week. Listen, man, you got work to do. It's a long season. You don't want your kicker thinking, what Pac Man going to say to me if I missed it? What? Shut up. And um, we're going to talk about uh, some more of this stuff with Warren Sapp. Doug Baldwin went in the face of, of, of Russell Wilson yesterday while they were struggling on the sideline. Right the there. kicker and now a quarterback? Yeah, these, Those are two. Yeah. And, and then Mike Tomlin had to coach thing, so there's all kind of out-of-body experiences going on in the National Football League, kids. This is not right. Warren Sapp is here live in studio here on the Rich Eisen Show. Can you stick around for another segment? Can you stick around for another segment? I ain't going nowhere. All right, that's Warren Sapp. Hopefully you're not going anywhere either. We're back. Hey, with now. us. Yeah, so some of this stuff is from uh, just my my the personal office. collection. Yeah, yeah, the office at I the see network. I urge class, and Charlie Sanders is in there. This is, but yeah. this is a ball that you gave... <laughs> As a giveaway at your party for your <laughs> Hall of Fame weekend, right? Yes. Chris Law. Yeah, no. Who no longer hey, has to put the, on the, the, the goodie bags keep on giving. Eh? My my <laughs> first uh, Hall of Fame was the year Dion and Marshall got invited. Yeah. Rich, Eleven. Can we come to the, uh, the party? So do me a favor, personalize that oh, or whatever. Yeah. In there. And then this is pretty cool too. You I'll gave that to everyone this. that came to your Hall of Fame can we party. See that? You gave this. To, this is a giveaway to everybody at your party. Hey man, it was a good Which time. So off why not the share? Hook. It? Why not share it? Okay. We Where had some of that Art Smith World Famous Chicken too. I remember that. <laughs> I went to, I go, to, remember I went seeing, to go to the Hall of Fame this year. Somebody say, "Dog, I'm still thinking about that chicken." I said, "You got to be kidding me." I remember also seeing Bruce Smith was there. Oh yeah. And then <laughs> it was the first time I also met. Um, uh, it was the first time that I also met. Uh, uh, um, the big right tall now. Mel Blunt. Yeah, 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 Mel Blunt, and and he was and he was head and shoulders above. <laughs> first time Bruce first, Smith. First time I saw him, I looked up. I say, is that a D. I remember thinking that Bruce Smith is one of the largest <laughs> like, men I've that, ever seen. Is that a D. right there? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And then all of a sudden, here comes Mel Blunt, and he's bigger than him. And I'm like, no wonder they changed the rules for you. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh oh, no, no, no. Swapping out. There's six Hall of Famers on there. There's only no, no, one no, no, on this one. Let's pump, pump, put it in. There we go. There you go. Ah! Boom. Perfect timing. Just the time. See, now this is why you love the Rich Eisen show right here. So oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you oh, yeah. Here you get the Kaze Blunt treatment. You get traded six Hall of Famers for one. What? That's it. <laughs> so they go. A six very good. pack. And that's got very Bruce good. Matthew. Oh, I beat him for a sack. Bruce Matthew, he bad. Herb? Oh, yeah. I mean, Herb's on there. Hey, the playmaker. So Herb we'll find Thomas. a different spot for this, but there you go. <laughs> You're I unbelievable. You are. Welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. Darren Sproles, who got injured on this play yesterday, uh, last night, oh. is expected to miss at least one game with an MCL sprain, which, judging by the looks of the injury Yee. and then the reaction that he had as it was being tested and the looks that he had as he was coming off the field, that, Warren Sapp, is a sigh of relief. Uh, yeah. So uh, <sighs> those Eagles are on a bye this week. So he's expected to miss two weeks of action, thus just the one game after the bye for that's the Philadelphia Normally Eagles. Normally MCL, you get a, get a month. So I guess well, maybe then that's on the low end. That's Sprained the Philadelphia it, yeah. Inquirer reporting that. We're still waiting to, on the results no, you of Steven. Tear it. you got to tear it to get a month. So if you, you just get, sprain it. Got it. Two weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then uh, Stephen Ridley, we're still waiting for the results of his MRI. Um, 
it's a broken fibula for Alex Mack. That's it for his season, and he hadn't even missed a snap <laughs> in his career. Yeah, the highest um, paid center in the NFL. Yep, and uh, and and then there's Victor Cruz. Oh, what were you? Th- you know, I'd love for you to speak to this, Warren. The the sight of Victor Cruz being carted off in tears. Michelle Tafoya saying she's never in her career heard the type of screams and and uh, emotional reaction, audible pain that Victor Cruz had suffered in her entire career. Just the mindset that you guys have as players, athletes, going out on the field, putting it all on the line and knowing that this moment can happen, the realization of it. Can you put into words about this, Warren? Knock on wood is the first thing you do because, unfortunately, it's the nature of the business that sometimes we have injuries. And sometimes it's an injury where it's not someone hitting you. It's just you putting your foot in the ground or stepping or cutting or whatever you have, whatever, whatever it may be. But that right there, boy, that, that, that's the one thing that we all dread is being carted off the field because we all want to get off on our own power. You know, that's always been the thing. Any upper up extremity I had, finger, shoulder, anything, I was going to walk off. You weren't going to cart me off, even if I was hurt. But he was in a position where he couldn't walk off. And you feel for him at any point because that's the one thing you never want to happen. We all pray in both locker rooms, the hedge of protection around each team. You know, because we all are men, fathers, and everything else after the game. So we want you to be able to enjoy that. But let's get in this arena and enjoy ourselves and then go home safe and healthy. But I, that's, I, that's a bad one. Right. And I also thought... That's why you get your money when you can get your money in this league. And we all know that Victor Cruz was was in a yeah, contractual in contract dispute. Year, and he would have came back this year and said, I'm going to put it on the line and really show you. That was an ugly one. Exactly. And Oof. and so many times, in, in, and it's a, in non-contact as well, where he's just leaping hey, forward. That's he, it. he grabs his knee before he's even down. And just seeing him so emotional and hugging the trainer. I mean, it is it is something else. Oh, you will hug that. the trainer, you will hug the physical therapist because they are your family at that point. What about one time the- when I took off, when my shoulder was, mm-hmm. the one time I got taken off in my 13 years, I missed, what, six games, my shoulder? It just really put me in a, a, a different frame of mind that <laughs> that morning I woke up, that next morning, mm-hmm. I didn't have to go to a meeting or anything. So, I woke up about nine, and you know, the meeting starts at nine, and I looked at, you know, woke up as a normal athlete, you know, you're running for your phone, you're late, and you go, nobody had call, nobody had text message. I felt like the most worthless, useless piece of trash. I mean, because you're no longer a part of the unit. We can't count on you. It, you're off to the side. It's a bad feeling. So that training, that recovery, people at the equipment staff, I mean, at the, the training staff, are your family at that point? But why is it like that? I, I you know, again, I, I, Wait, ne- I you've, you've, you've been at football practices when the guy you know, breaks I, an ankle I, and they say, get him off to the side, let's move I 10 have, yards. I have, and I, you Just know, I've been, I've been fortunate to do what I've done, Warren, for gosh, now 17 years, and I've Beautiful. seen it in baseball too. Yeah, I saw it in baseball. Uh-huh. You see it in every sport. Hockey, it doesn't matter. Where it's a family, it's a tight knit group. The <laughs> locker room is is us against the world, Until and you lean on your guys, and then you get hurt, and you are and no suddenly, longer in the group. But why is that? Because we can't count on you, Rich. You no longer can tow your line. But that's when it's I not need a you the most. It's though. not a family. Let's let's let's, let's stop that in, a, in in all of America right now. It's not a family. It's a brotherhood of men, and each man must tow the line. Because a family, if you're walking down the street and the baby is behind, everybody stops. Make sure the baby's safe, right? In a football environment, you either tow your line or get the hell from around us. Because you are responsible for a certain part of this thing that we're doing. And if you can't tow that line, I would rather you be away from it than in the middle of it, hurting all of us. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I I remember we saw Reggie Wayne on the sideline last year uh, in Tennessee when we did Thursday Night Football Colts, Tennessee, Mm -hmm. a few weeks after he had blown out his knee. Oh, he, and he was trying to coach the players up, and he was trying to be there, and he's being a teammate, and he's getting into it. And the two things that I saw, which were, which, which I'll never forget, <laughs> was him just, he just, he was just depressed, right, that he couldn't get out there. But the other thing, too, is he was coaching up some of these like, kids. Like, come on. He was, he, like, he was. Like you get the eye roll. He gets, you get the eye roll. Like, man, go sit down somewhere, man. Because you can't toe the line, and you can't tell me how to do it. But it was also eye-rolling over that he, he couldn't coach. Some of you guys who are Hall of Famers, 
Okay, you oh, don't no, no, suffer no. like hey, because you guys do it a certain way. That's why you get the gold jacket. That's why Reggie why Wayne's going to get that I gold am jacket. I beside you on Sunday morning and not yelling at someone's kid at a college campus <laughs> or, some, or some high school or, or you know what I'm saying or, or some million dollar dude in the National Football League. No, I'm I don't know how say, Dion does it. What? You know what? Dion does it out of love because when you're that young and that little and sure. that deprived. Someone has to give you a way to get out. And I, and I applaud Dion for that, because Dion has the mentality to be able to do it, because you know like I do, he's just the salt of the earth. He's just a great dude. But I love watching games with you, Marshall, <laughs> Michael, Dion, because you have a certain view of it where you don't suffer fools at mm -mm. all. Mm -mm. You know, and I saw that with a little bit with Reggie Wayne, where it's just where he was trying to help these young kids, but they, sometimes he would just be... You just got to let them go. You just got to let him go. You really do. It was sure. like when I first got Anthony McFarlane. And he was just like a, a little bugger. puppy. Yeah, yeah. Run right behind me. Just like a little puppy. Everywhere I went. And I'm like, buddy, you got to stand beside me and run with me. Not behind me. Run beside me. And I don't think he ever, you know, got that until it was the time that I was out of the game. And I said, now it's yours. He's like, so what do I do? I said, what gap you got? <laughs> I said, you've heard many days of sitting in that meeting. You ain't got nothing but the B gap. So go play it. Mm -hmm. We all know J.J. Watt's the best defender in the oh, game, right? There's yes. not even a question yes, about that. The best defensive unit. If I had told you prior to the season that we would be arguing after week <laughs> six play that it's either Dallas or Detroit, what would your answer be? Is that really tea and apple juice and those things over there? <laughs> Yes, exactly it is. What I'd ask yes, you. You yes, it is. You were over all week, and that's tea and apple juice, and you talking is. about Dallas and Detroit's defense? Uh, well, we saw it. Right I mean, uh, <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater looked like he oh. needed a lifeline. Oh, he needed one yesterday, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Them boys was hunting yesterday. Right. But that's what you do. You get a quarterback coming off an ankle, you put him in a situation where he's going to have a rough day. How good is this Detroit defense? You know what? They used to play in ways, and I think it's just one of those epiphanies where you get in a game and you play well that week. But you have to string it together in the National Football League. You know this. One week from the penthouse to the outhouse. I'll give them love. They, they, they did a great job without Rage So you Rage need to Bush, see more. Without Calvin. Yeah. You need to see more. Yeah. It took me eight good years and seven great years of playing defense to win a championship. So who is the best defense in the, in the NFL through six weeks, right? Is it still Seattle, even though uh, you saw what you, even though no, Dallas No, 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 no. Because you know you're only as good as your last game. So let's go you with are. Dallas. I can't believe it. Let's I still Dallas. can't believe it. Cannot. I know. Did they give up four, four hundred yard passes a year ago? It was beyond awful. Yeah, four, four hundred. It was beyond awful with with two of your former coordinators, oh, Rob Ryan me? and Monty Kiffin. Trust me. I, I, and now Marinelli has it. My 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 the, my heart. It's and it's no Sean Lee. No right? Sean Lee. Claiborne, who no Claiborne, no De Don Demarcus, way off the edge. I mean, you're looking at it and you're trying to identify him. I no, know who Henry Milton Hatcher's is. not there. Right? No, Hatcher's not there. And then you see you see splashes of Anthony Spencer every now and then. Right. <laughs> but there's a whole group of different guys that are getting it done for us. Savine 99 is playing well for him. I mean, Milton's in the middle, and that's the one guy you can identify. But it's everybody. And McLean, what, he retired three times? But you ought to be shot play, good as, as well as you're playing right now to run away from this game. Oh, that's a shame. And the D-line coach in Dallas, Leon Lett. Yeah. Big cat. Right, the big, big cat. Catlet. It's just really all working for Dallas right now. San Diego, though, gets no mention. No love. Maybe no. it's the West Coast out here. No. I mean, but they're, <laughs> we're going to see them on Thursday night football in 10 beautiful. days yeah. in Denver. Mm -hmm. And maybe is that, is that the game where we start all talking about the Chargers? If they go into if Denver they win. and they win that yeah. one? You know, because we, we're, we're, we're a new dish. What's the new dish? <laughs> well, Brandon <laughs> yeah. Oliver's a new dish. Oh, yeah, definitely. What did he do for me yesterday? I know he ran for 100. Did he get my 100 receiving? Is that your, is that your fantasy? Yeah, no, that was my bowl. Okay. That was my bowl. Look at him, man. Oh, my fantasy team is in the... I was going to ride Megatron, and all of a sudden, Megatron is Optimus Prime got a hold of him. Yeah, I made I made the uh, genius general managing move of benching oh. T.Y. Hilton for Percy Harvin this week. How, how's that taste right now? No, no, no. I really want to know what you did with Darren Oliver after Marshall told you what this young man was well, doing. Well, I couldn't get I couldn't get oh, I you couldn't get a hold Brent, of him. Brent, okay, I, could, okay, I couldn't right, get all right, him. All right. I was too good the first few T. weeks. T.Y. Hilton bench for who? Percy Harvin. I mean, what am I? I'm thinking, I was thinking Dallas Russell Wilson defense, and Percy. Yeah, yes. in there, you got to stop the, it. One right. reverse. We just yeah, saw what they I, I were doing you. in I Washington. Percy you. had three I, touchdowns I can see the madness. I can see the madness, but sometimes the madness and the genius is quite What's that? far that's just, apart. That's just pride messing with your yeah, mind. Boy, a no. couple of hard yeah. piping brothers, a blowtorch, and a wire pliers. <laughs>
Pride. Oh, man. It's just pride. You are the man. That pride. Um, did you see what happened to uh, my producer, Ted, earlier? I don't know if you, you saw know what? that. You know what? I walked in the building, <laughs> and I saw you and uh, DP going, and, you know, and he ran out the door. Where yeah. was he? And then he went all the way down the side, Rich. Yeah, there he goes. He well, walked what? off. My showrunner Oh, you know, I've done a couple moment. walk-offs, but nothing yes, like this. <laughs> <laughs> Put a jersey on. But you can understand the rage, right? Oh, I, mean, no, I couldn't hear it. No, no, there he goes, and there he comes around the corner. Yeah, no, I watched all this, and I'm like, turn it up, D. You know, he finally turned it up for me, but at this point, he was gone. The the mic was being drugged, IFB, everything. There he goes. I love it. (laughs) Wouldn't you love to do that? I'd love to do that Sunday, like around hour two of game day morning. No, nah, hour two, I'm just getting warm. You know what I mean? Yeah. After that, I can walk off there. You know, and uh, so many people talk to me. I don't know if they talk to you about game day morning and how they enjoy oh they do because we we genuinely do like each other oh we genuinely like each other razz each other yes everything it, it's a it's a genuine yeah you it guys genuine. Uh. just you guys love <laughs> and this is from dion you guys love sneaking me a snickers bar in the middle of some moments off camera yeah we because, had one sunday because <laughs> you know I, you know rich sometimes has those my moments temper. when he's not himself and we have to give him a snicker bar to you know snap him back you know <laughs> Had a slight moment, one of those, and Mariucci just slides just one slide of them right next to me. The and he, and like, oh, you man, know what he looked at me? He goes, "It's low-hanging fruit." <laughs> that's what he said. He's but that's Mooch though, for you know, uh, Mooch is the best too. God, thank you. Hey, anytime, my man. Please, I know so you're short right. ride over here to El Segundo. Yes, I like it, it is. It I is. I like it. Well, maybe let me I know hope if I you see. I don't leave my wallet in El Segundo. On your way back to doing Total Access today, let me know if you run into Ted because he might be. He, I, we don't know, you know where what? he is in town. I'll get Ed, a Ted an Uber and get him home. Okay. I'll get him back over here. <laughs> Warren Sapp, Pro Football Hall of Famer, who gave us our newest bauble here on the set, autographed a giveaway from his Hall of Fame post induction party. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On audience.